Hi, I'm Bob Meyer from Workrec. I'm here to uh, show you the two models that we've been making since 1947. The Model 4000 and the Model 3000 are smaller than the two models, more portable, goes through an inch and a half of wood to the glue line. The larger Model 4000 is more of a production line machine and it'll penetrate through two and a half inches of wood. How does the machine work? The machine works through radio frequency. Radio frequency is developed in the generator, whether it be the 3000 or the Model 4000. It goes through a 13-foot coaxial cable into the handgun box. The energy goes out the width of this foot, about four and a half inches. It goes out an inch and a half back to the other foot, or two and a half inches in the Model 4000, back and forth between these two feet. Our frequency is 27.12 megacycles. That means that 27 million times a second, it changes direction, back and forth, making the moisture molecules in the glue go left and right so fast that they bump into each other, creating friction and heat. That's what heats your glue joint. In tuning the handgun to the generator box, he would hold the handgun in the air and then pull the trigger and move the thumb adjuster back and forth, back and forth, watching the milliamp meter to see a difference of about two milliamps, just about a sixteenth of an inch. That means the handgun is in tune with the generator box. If you find it out of tune, as if the needle would go too far back and forth or not move at all, remove the feet. And if it goes too far, back and forth, pull the 14-turn coil apart at both ends. Don't unscrew it, just pull it apart. If you find that the needle does not move at all on the milliamp meter, push the coil together. And that will get it in tune. Then put the feet back in place and try it again. That's pulling the trigger, moving the thumb adjuster back and forth, watching the milliamp meter. It should travel a difference of about two milliamps, just about a sixteenth of an inch. That is how you tune the handgun box to the generator. For different width projects, that's how wide the project is. You can take the feet that have pins that are off center and turn them around and plug them back in. This will allow you to get high heat. When you have a wider space between the feet, for a wider board, wider than two inches. If this is not wide enough, then perhaps you need what we call special electrodes, and that would be these two feet. And now you see that's very wide between the two feet. So if you had a very wide area, that would be what you want, these small special electrodes. We also have roller electrodes, and the roller electrodes plug in, and that would allow you to roll along at a rate. The rate would be every four inches, about every five seconds. Also, we offer inside miters to get into a tight corner. You would use these to get into a 45 degree angle corner. We also offer outside miters, and these would be for an outside corner, as you can see. However, in most cases, the outside corner can be reached easily with the flat or standard feet, as so. Understanding that we're dealing with a radio frequency, it is truly like a radio. And knowing that, we have what we call a thumb adjuster. This is a compensator for the density of the wood, the type of wood, the thickness, the amount of glue, all of those things. So every time you're using this, you're pulling this red trigger and you're moving the thumb adjuster. The thumb adjuster will allow you to get high heat on the milliamp meter. This means that you will do the weld quickly. When we're doing this, it's often asked about a metal workbench or extension cord, things of that nature. Uh, a metal workbench, it's okay to use as long as you have something between the metal and these electrode feet. Extension cords will just cause a voltage drop and you won't be able to get your high heat. Now, what happens in arcing and things of that nature, if you touch the metal clamp, you can get an arc and it will look like this. What you don't want to do is to have arcing either on a piece of metal or in the glue line. Sometimes the glue line will cause arcing. 
and you don't want that. That is objectionable, and you don't want to do that. If you have a glue line like this, and you're going to weld, and you must put the feet in the glue, put a board over it. Wipe the squeeze, put your board over the top of the glue, go through the boards in order to cause your set. When using this machine, realizing that it's a radio frequency machine, it reacts just like a radio. The thumb adjuster that we mentioned will go forward and back in order to attain our high heat. So forward is not high, backward is not low. It's more like tuning a radio where you hear your station better, better, oops, I passed it, going back the other way. Two ways to know if you're achieving high heat. One would be to watch the milliamp meter and notice that it goes high on the scale. The second would be to watch the glow lamp on the face of the handgun. As it gets brighter, it will correspond to the milliamp meter. As the meter gets higher, the lamp will get brighter. The often asked question is, what type of glue should I use? Knowing that it's radio frequency and it reacts to the moisture or water in the glue, any water-based glue will work fine. We recommend some glues that are pre-catalyzed, like Peck Bomb 2, for example. What happens then is we heat the joint with the radio frequency and it kicks off the catalyst and makes it strong right away. If you were to use a regular PVA glue or a urea glue or any of those, after you heat the glue, leave it in the clamps for it to cool, maybe a minute to two minutes. Once it cools, it will lock up and be very strong. Remember also to always go across the glue line like this. Don't have the glue line in between the feet. Also, do not use the edge of the feet on the glue line like this. This will cause arcing and it will be harmful to the machine. Okay, let's demonstrate how the machine will operate and how quickly it will dry the glue. We're using a tight bond 2 glue, which is a pre-catalyzed glue, and we, because we are heating the glue, it will kick off the catalyst and work very well. However, it will work with any water-based glue because it works on the water in the glue. Well, you can watch the board here and watch the glue line as I put the two boards together and you will see how quickly we can set the glue. You notice the steam coming out of the joint? Five seconds or less is, is what's recommended. That quickly we have caused a set in the glue. We've released the moisture out of the glue and the two boards are locked together. The boards you can still see, you can wipe the squeeze, the glue is not cured, it is set. That's important to know. It must be set, not cured. No matter how long we leave the machine on there, it will not cure the glue. That is a 24-hour process, a chemical process, of the glue itself.